Right, a very rare record, this one. It's a privately produced uh, record. HMV uh, enabled uh, private people, if they wished, to have a special run, a limited run of their own recordings. And this is uh, poetry recordings by the uh, Quaker uh, speaker. He was a well-known public speaker and uh, a writer on the subject of, of the Christian Quaker movement. And he was also known for his poetry recitation as well. So these are three poems. I think they're all by him. This is the first one on side one of this uh, lovely 12-inch uh, uh, 78 RPM shellac record from 1935. You can see it's signed. That's his signature there. 28, uh, uh, 28th of March 1935. And the first track is about a prehistoric horse. It's called the Eohippus. The Eohippus was a, uh, a type of uh, a very small early horse about the size of a Labrador and it lived in North America millions of years ago. The Eohippus. The Eohippus was the geological ancestor of the horse. There was once a little animal, no bigger than a fox, and on five does he scampered over tertiary rocks. They called him Eohippus and they called him very small and they thought him of no value when they thought of him at all. For the lumpish old dinosaurus and Corypodon so slow, for the heavy aristocracy in days of long ago. Said the little Eohippus, I'm going to be a horse, and on my middle fingernail to run my earthly course. I'm going to have a flowing tail, I'm going to have a mane, I'm going to stand fourteen hands high on the psychozoic plain. The Corypodon was horrified, and Dinoceras was shocked. And they chased Johnny O'Hippus, but he skipped away and mocked. Then they laughed enormous laughter, and they groaned enormous groans. And they bade Johnny O'Hippus go view his father's bones. Quoth they, you always were as small and mean as now we see. And that's conclusive evidence you're always going to be. What, be a great, tall, handsome beast with hoofs to gallop on? Why, you'd have to change your nature, said the Loxolophodon. They considered him disposed of and retired with gate serene. That was the way they argued in the early year scene. There was an anthropoid ape far smarter than the rest, and everything that they could do, he always did the best. So they naturally disliked him, and they gave him shoulder school, and when they had to mention him, they said he was a fool. Try this pretentious ape one day, I'm going to be a man, and stand upright and hunt and fight, and conquer all I can. I'm going to cut down forest trees, to make my houses higher. I'm going to kill the mastodon. I'm going to make a fire. Loud screamed the anthropoidal apes, with laughter wild and gay. And they tried to catch that boastful one, but he always got away. Then they yelled at him in chorus, which he didn't mind a bit. And they pelted him with coconuts, which didn't seem to hit. And then they brought him arguments, which they thought of much avail, to prove that his preposterous attempt was sure to fail. Said the sages, in the first place, the thing cannot be done. In the second, if it could be, there would not be any fun. And the third and most inclusive, and admitting no reply, you would have to change your nature. We should like to see you try. And then they yelled in chorus those lean and hairy shapes, for these things passed as arguments with the anthropoidal apes. There was a Neolithic man, an enterprising white, who kept his chopping implements unusually bright. Unusually clever he, unusually brave, and he drew delightful mammoths on the borders of his cave. To his Neolithic neighbors, who were startled and surprised, he said, My friends, in course of time, we shall be civilized. We are going to live in cities. We are going to fight in wars. We are going to eat three times a day, without the natural cause. We are going to turn life upside down, about a theme called gold. We are going to want the earth and take as much as we can hold. We are going to wear great piles of stuff outside our proper skins. We are going to have diseases and accomplishments and sins. Then they all rose up in fury against their boastful friend, for prehistoric patients come as quickly to an end. Tried one, this is chimerical, utopian, absurd. Said another, what a stupid life, you gallop and my word. Cried all, these things can never come, you idiotic child. You can't change human nature, and they all sat back and smiled. Thought they, an answer to this last, it will be hard to find. 
It was a clinching argument to the Neolithic mind.